I'm going to talk about my invention journey of how I learned that you do not have to start a business to bring your invention to market. You see, the traditional business model has always been, if you have an invention, you need to start a company. That means you're going to have to write a business plan, raise money, do all the marketing, the advertisement. In fact, you're going to do all the heavy lifting. But there's a lot of us out there, including myself, that we have ideas, we have inventions, but we do not want to start a business. Maybe we don't have the time. Maybe we don't have the money. Maybe we don't have the skill. Or maybe we don't even have the desire to start a business. But there is another business model I want to talk about tonight. And it's called licensing. And licensing is very, very simple. You're basically going to rent or license your idea to a company that's already in business. They already have the manufacturing in place. They already have the advertisement, the, the, the marketing. They've got everything in place for you. And every time they sell your invention, they're going to pay you a royalty. Basically, it's a perfect partnership. Now, I'm gonna step back in time a little bit. I'm at San Jose State University, and I'm studying art because I love to work with my hands. But I realize I'm not gonna be this great artist, and it's gonna be really tough to make a living. So, I just started making stuffed animals. That's a little odd. But I went out to uh, state fairs, county fairs, art festivals, wherever I could set up a table, I would I bring my creations there. Now my family and friends thought I was absolutely out of my mind. But guess what? I loved every minute of it. I learned a lot about people. I was able to be creative. And I learned a lot about business. But soon, I'm at, I'm in Fremont. And I'm laying on the couch, it's Sunday morning, I'm reading the Sunday paper, and there's an article about the startup company called Worlds of Wonder, and they were going to bring to market the first talking teddy bear. And there was a picture of Teddy Ruxpin. And it was a prototype, but it looked so terrible. So I went down there on Monday morning, knocked on the door, and I said, I'm here, I can make Teddy look cute. And guess what? They said, you're hired. It's my first job. It's my first paycheck. I'm only 27 years old. <laughs> so guess who's happy? My friends are happy. My family's happy. I'm extremely happy. So they sent me over to China to, to, to supervise the production of Teddy Ruxpin because Teddy Ruxpin became a number one hit toy. We sold over 5 million Teddy Ruxpins at $89. That one invention, we were almost the largest company in the world. And I'm over there for months and months and months. And I'm just not having a good time. Number one, I want to work on my own inventions. That's when the light bulb just went off. Because the creator, the inventor of Teddy Ruxpin, Ken Forsay, he wasn't there. He had licensed or rented his idea to Worlds of Wonder. And every time they sold one, he got paid a royalty. That's when I realized that's exactly what I want to do. So eventually I got back home. I quit Worlds of Wonder to start my own company. And the very first idea that I licensed was an indoor basketball game with a little Nerf ball. You see, I'm fairly tall. I love to play basketball. And I went down the, the Toys R Us and I picked up this little game you see up here from Ohio Art. I brought it home and I started playing in my office and I was loving it. But there was a problem. Michael Jordan was too small. And I'm a big fan of Michael Jordan. So I went down to the store, I bought a poster and I, I cut Michael Jordan out of it and I stuck it on the backboard and I loved playing with it. In fact, so much, I thought I'm gonna send it to Ohio Art and see what they say. Sure enough, three days later, after I sent it, they sent me a contract. The Michael Jordan wall ball sold for over 10 years. It was at every major retailer across the country. 
And there was even a commercial on Saturday morning showing Michael. It was fantastic. I was hooked. This was a perfect business model for someone like myself. And I'm sure there's a lot of people here that that looks pretty good. So I went ahead and licensed over 20 ideas in many different industries. But my first invention, finally, I'm in Modesto, California, and I'm reading in the paper how there's never enough information on labels. I was fascinated by that. Because on medication, there needs to have a lot of information on that label. Because the article went on to say that because that information doesn't stay on that label, it gets thrown away with the leaflet or on the box, people are taking the wrong medication at the wrong time. And there's a big problem with that. So I thought, what am I going to do? I can create something. And just by accident, I had a product that I had licensed. It was a fun cup and canteen that when you would spin it, it, it just revealed games for kids. But what it did was provide more information. So I thought, gee, what if I could make a label? Now, this was hard plastic. So I went down to the, the store that day, and, and I picked up a, a box of cough syrup. And I, then I went next door to a copy place, and I was trying to take that label off. It wasn't easy. And I started playing with a double label system. One label would be on the base. There would be a label on top of it with a little window. And when you spun the top label, it would reveal extra information. I called it spin information. <laughs> and here's the commercial to show you how it works. Sundown Herbals presents its remarkable twist and learn label. It works like an herbal information center that helps you learn about herbs simply by turning the label. Sundown's new twist and learn label, where to turn for help. Finally, I have an invention. <laughs> Go from stuffed animals to a basketball game to an invention. So I ended up licensing this technology to the, the, lar the world's largest label company in the world, CCL Label. They sold hundreds of millions of rotating labels. It was on national brands such as Nescafe Coffee in Japan. It was on Lowry Spices and vitamins, on water. It was everywhere. We sold so many labels. I was so excited about this. But the one application I was most proud. You see, parents have been overdosing their children with cough syrup because they, they were looking at the instructions and they were dosing their children by their age, not by their weight. So a lot of the ER doctors were seeing all these kids coming in. So a company called AccuDial took my technology, launched a product that you could dial in the correct dosing just by the weight, not by the age. It went on to win 15 awards around the world, including two Edisons. I was able to get 20 patents issue, issued on this one particular technology. But here it is. People ask me all the time, Steve, you've got to be crazy here. Is it that easy to come up with ideas and license those ideas to companies? I'm here to tell you yes. Companies need ideas from us. See, in order for them to be competitive, they have to innovate. That means they have to come up with a lot of ideas. So it's called open innovation. They've opened their doors wide for people like us that do not want to start businesses because maybe we don't have the time or the money or the experience. So it's perfect. That means anybody here that has an idea can now bring those ideas to market through licensing. And I'm so excited about this, I wrote a book called One Simple Idea. It gives you 10 steps how anybody can license an idea. It's very, very simple to do. I'm very proud of this book from McGraw-Hill. It's been translated in six different languages. It's been selling for over seven years. And I'm just so happy to be here tonight to explain that anybody here can get in the game and be an inventor. So I want to thank the AAAS and the Limbelson Foundation for inviting me to be here tonight. What an honor, and I want to thank everyone tonight for coming out.